Lord, to the name of the Lord, we thank God this evening for his goodness towards us, that we are alive again on planet Earth. We are not alive just to pass time, but we are alive to worship and praise the Lord, because God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we give honor to the spirit of God this evening, that we can be back in the house and on social media. We want to say good evening to everyone, those in the house and those who are on this social media platform. We are here this evening for our study and we just want to praise God for who he is, not just towards us, but generally he is a God that cannot and will never fail. So before we go into our study this evening, we want to just pray God's blessing and his direction and his leading that it will not just be words spoken, but it will be words that will cause our hearts to be cheered with words, words that will cause our lives to be an example and will strengthen us and will allow us to strengthen others. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. You have favored us with life. Some of us just go about casually as if our lives are in our hands. Or not even remembering you. But as soon as we are struck with pains and all kind of a situation, Lord, we are calling upon you and calling for others to pray. Help us not, O oh God, to ignore you or to give stand disregard to you, but to trust you and acknowledge you all the days of our lives. Lord, you say you are not mocked, so whatsoever we sow, we shall reap. This evening, as your word go forth, we pray. That through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be uplifted, we will be enlightened, and we will be strengthened to continue this journey with you. Lord, we know that you are powerful and you are mighty. Lord, we thank you that even in a world of turmoil and unpleasant happenings, we still have a hope, one that makes it not a shame, a hope of eternal life. We bind the forces of evil, and we decree and declare this airway clear. Oh God, the, the presence of the Almighty God in this house, and somebody will be touched, blessed, and healed this evening in Jesus' mighty and precious name. So we want to say welcome again to this platform, and we just thank you that you have chosen Games of Eagle Deliverance Church of God this evening at 4611 Church Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. We want to invite those around the area to let you know that on a Thursday you can come right in the house and worship the Lord with us because we know that iron sharpened iron and we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. This evening our text is taken from our lesson is taken from James 5, 14 to 15 and we are going to be looking on divine Healing this evening, divine healing. James 5 14 to 15. James 5 14 to 15. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up and if he have committed any sin they shall be forgiven this evening we want to look deeply on divine healing the scripture tells us that divine healing is provided in the atonement because of the atoning blood of jesus christ Divine healing is provided for us. There is, uh, there are so many people in the world today that 
when things does not happen their own timing, they go to seek other help for their healing. I do believe from a personal perspective that many more people could be alive today if their trust was solely in the Almighty God and those who he have allowed to gain certain wisdom to study the human body and to prescribe the right medication. There are so many people who limit the power of God, say they are children of God, but when it comes to their sickness, they have all kinds of things burning in their houses. They refuse to seek God. Hence, they seek the power of the witches and the wizard. But Acts 10, 38 tells us how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. This evening, we want to declare that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Brothers and sisters, I want us to know this evening, is there any among you sick? Call. Call. Some people are so proud. Sad to say, starting from the pulpit, even some of us as ministers of the gospel, when we are not well, we just say we stay away for a couple of weeks or hide away. Uh, from the people that we serve. But if sickness is common to all men and women. So why should we hide it if we are sick? I don't know about any other leader. If it had not been for the people of God. In the body of Christ. I would not be alive today. Because what happened? They have to intercede on my behalf. Is any among you sick? Let him call. Somebody say call. Call for the elders of the church. People with experience in God. Not people who have a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. Let him call for the elders of the church. Those who are experienced in battle warfare. And let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Any other anointing with oil other than the name of the Lord is counterfeit. And it shall not alas. For without faith it is impossible to please God. I don't know about you. But my help cometh from the Lord. The Lord is the maker and the ruler of my life. He said he will not suffer my foot to be removed. Behold he that keepeth he will not slumber. Behold he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep divine healing my brothers and sisters divine healing involves a supernatural act which revolves a spiritual emotional or spiritual problem in christendom today or if you want to say in the christian context it is the supernatural element uh, which is God through the power of the Holy Spirit that caused healing to take place. In the New Testament, approximately one fifth of the Gospel's narrative is devoted to Jesus' healing ministry. So it is today. Once we are doing it in the name of Jesus, we cannot fake it. It has to be real when we do it. In the name of Jesus. At the start of his ministry. Matthew 4.23 states. Jesus went about throughout Galilee. Teaching in their synagogues. Preaching the good news of the kingdom. And healing every disease and sickness among the people. Luke further or later records. When Jesus sent his twelve disciples how to preach the gospel. He gave them power and authority to heal the sick. The question is this evening, are you a disciple of Christ? 
if you are this a disciple of Christ, then divine healing you should believe. And if you are a disciple of Christ, He has given you the authority and the power to heal the sick. So if you are sick, if your child is sick, even before you call for help, you must pray. So that when you get help, it should move from level one to level two. Because we know that the effective prayer of the righteous, hallelujah, avail it much. After the ascension of Jesus Christ, the resurrection and ascension of Christ, the apostle Paul continued healing many. In Acts 5, 12 to 16, we learn, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. I want us to know if we are to experience signs and wonders, we have to believe. It is not just the lead or the pastor and one believing. You have to believe for all things are possible to them that believe. And they were all with one accord. That's the problem. Today, we find out that since this pandemic, the church is not on one accord. We have more a Zoom accord than a church physical accord. And the Bible says we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. We are not tired to go to work. We are not tired to do our business. Uh, we are not tired to do it. But when you are to come into the house of the Lord, you can't make it because you are tired. We are, I'm not saying that we are not human. But we must take time out for God. Because it is he who gives us the strength to work. It is he who gives us the strength to walk, to talk. I want us this evening to uh, emulate the apostles. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord. Among the people. And they were all with one accord. In the house of the Lord. And the rest. Of them. Were. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that their labor in the Lord. Will not be in vain. And verse 14. And all believers were. More believers rather were added to the Lord. Multitudes. Both men and women. The only way people can be saved. Is when the church is attractive. There has to be people in the house of the Lord telling others that this is the way of the Lord. Uh, and I want you to know that empty houses cannot attract uh, people. It takes people to come into the house of the Lord devoted to let people know that we, we are experiencing goodness in God. In as much as they brought forth the sick into the streets and lay them on the beds and couches. That at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. That's how much they believed. They came also a multitude out of the city round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folks. And them were vexed with unclean spirit. I want us to know that these days we, uh, we as people come into the house of the Lord, some of them are innocent to what is happening to them. But they are possessed. We can only say they are possessed. And some of us want to throw them outside. But what happened to the anointing in our life? To decree and declare that that spirit must get out in the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God did not say we should slap them. Or we should... Um, Shake them up and do all kind of a stuff. He said, speak the word. And these people will be delivered. Acts record the number of healing by Peter, John, and Paul. Read Acts chapter 19, verse 12. And uh, Acts 28, 8 to 9. Brothers and sisters, God may heal directly because of our faith and confidence in him. Or he may heal through medicine. So don't get it wrong. 
that God provided um, doctors on earth. He had a doctor in his cabinet. Dr. Luke was in his cabinet. He believed in medicine. Yeah, uh, we believe in the earth the physician because he is the great physician who gives wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Our responsibility is to put ourselves in the hand of the Lord before we go and see the medical doctor that the right diagnosis will come up and will be treated and will be healed in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if he had committed any sin, it shall be forgiven. But here, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. I want you to know that oil is important when it comes to the, the scriptures. I want you to know that once it is used in the correct form in the name of Jesus, God may heal directly through our faith and confidence in him or heal through medicine. The oil here in this text symbolizes the presence of God. Psalm 16, 11 tells us what happens in the presence of God. Thou will show me the path of life. So the reason why a lot of people have already um, submit or give up themselves to the devil, give up their lives to the devil, and have taken all kind of a unscrupulous substances in their system is because they were not in the presence of the Lord. Thou will show me the part of life, both spiritual life and physical life, because in thy presence there is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 23, 5 continues. Thou preparest a, a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. It is important while the oil is dedicated, while the oil is uh, given to God. Hallelujah. God will know what to do with it when we use it. It will be just as effective as if the natural hand of God is upon it. Luke 10. 30 to 34 records. And Jesus answering and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. Uh, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. I wonder if there's any priests like that in our time and age today. And likewise, there was a Levite. When he saw, when he was at that place, he came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in a situation? Oh, my God, where you need somebody to come to your rescue and they just pass you on the other side. But a certain Samaritan journey, there is always somebody that God will send to the rescue. Can I talk to somebody this evening that God is going to send somebody to your rescue? He knows what you are going through. He may not come when you want him, but he's going to be there on time. He's not going to let you suffer because it's well that we should not suffer but be in good health and prosper as our soul prosper. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, God always allows somebody to journey. Hallelujah. Sometimes he delays somebody in order for you to be delivered. A certain Samaritan journeyed and came where he was and when he saw him, he had compassion. This evening, I want us to ask us, where is the compassion that the body of Christ should have? Somebody had compassion for us. Somebody stayed in the house of God, prayed us through. Somebody prayed us through to fasting and prayer. The church no longer fast. The church no longer pray. Just want a microwave quick fixer. And tell, tell you about your prosperity and 
God, this is going to happen next year. And some people are paying thousands of dollars just to hear it. But it is already written in the word of God that whatsoever you do it shall prosper. Unless you are not in the will of God, then you can prosper. And they went out to him and bound his womb. And he rather went out to him and bound his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his beast, and brought him in an inn, and took care of him. We see here the effectiveness of oil and wine towards the womb. So you could see that it served as medicinal purposes in those times. My brothers and sisters, Prayers of faith are answered, not simply because we pray, we are praying people and praying in faith, but if they are praying in the will of God. So there are many things that we are praying for morning, noon, and night, and we give God ultimatums that if we do not get it within a certain time, then we are going to walk away. If we walk away, who lose? God are us. The will of God consists of things that are in line with his words. The will of God consists of things that are in line with his plan and his purpose. Simply state here, it is the things that God wants and God also is not unafraid to communicate these things to others. He tells us in his words, Hallelujah, that if it is not in alignment with his will, then he is not going to allow it. And if we go out of his will, we are going to suffer the consequences. First John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, somebody needs to say anything. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God does not always uh, think it best to heal. Oh, wow. Yeah, this sounds strange. Uh, because what happened? God wants us to be in good health. And he wants us to be well. But Job was having a situation. Job cursed the very day he died. Oh, hallelujah. Until God bring Job to a realization that, listen, Job. Uh, I, I am using you as an example to let the devil know that you will not forsake me. Though your wife is encouraging you, though everything around you is gone. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be. But you will not let me down. If you ask anything according to his will, he will hear it us. God does not always think it best to him. For in our infirmities, oh, hallelujah, he is glorified. Oh, glory to the Almighty God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. While you mock other in the body of Christ these days, nothing can help the Christians again and then get leaked. Nothing can happen to Christians, and it is not this and it's not that. But sometimes God allow it. The songwriter said, it drew me aside to be tested and tried. But in the valley, he restored my soul. I don't know about you, but I don't, when I'm going through my storm, when I'm going through sickness, pain, or anguish, I don't want any negativity around me. Anybody who will not be an encourager, I don't want you. If you're going to use my situation to criticize me, the blood of Jesus is against you. Second Corinthians 12, verse 5 to 10. Of such and one will I glory when you're going through your situation and you are a child of God. God say with glory. Yet not of myself. Hallelujah. I will not glory. Paul was saying, but in my infirmities. Thank you, Lord, for this. Because sometimes God permits infirmities for us to stay longer on planet Earth. Sometimes you are on the job and you are afflicted and you have to stay home. Oh, the, the plot of the enemy was for them to kill you. 
And the devil climbs the time clock. When it is set, it cannot be reversed. So when the devil time clock should go off, uh, that somebody should attack you or something should happen to you. On the eye we are, on the by we are in the, the, the place of your work. Hallelujah. God just allow you. Oh, yes, it causes some pain. It causes you a pain in the back, headache, footache, and all kind of a hit. But your lives are spirit. Hallelujah. It is such and one I will glory. Yet not myself, I will not glory. But in my infirmities. Hallelujah. For though I would desire to glory. I shall not be fooled, for I will say the truth. But now, hallelujah, I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he said me to be. Hallelujah. So I don't, I don't have to try to prove my innocence to make me look good as if, as the pastor, that um, I cannot um, go through any sickness or any trials or any tribulation. So we need help behind it. Oh my God, if some of us will be honest to the people that we serve to let them know that we go through hardship and difficulty, sickness and trials, our congregations would be more stable. Unless I should be exalted above measure. Oh, hallelujah. Through the abundance of revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Paul was saying, Paul did not hide it. It is written here this evening that we can see it in 2 Corinthians 12, 5 to 10. Paul said he was given a turn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan buffeted me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Because Paul was well learned. No doubt if Paul had gotten um, certain I would call it that there are many persons with evangelistic flair in their lives. Uh, they think that they are better than other speakers or they can, uh, when they don't say God saves soul, they say we win them. Uh, hallelujah. They, they, they are safe under our ministry. The ministry belongs to God. The church is not ours. Hallelujah. It is through the divine power and the healing power of God. That the church is being built. A message that Satan buffeted me, lest I should be exalted among above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord three times. Oh, somebody will say, I besought the Lord more than three times, and he has not come true for me yet, that I might it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Hallelujah. For my strength is made perfect in weakness, most assuredly. Therefore, I would rather glory, Paul said, in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in the infirmities. Because what happened? It gave him the opportunity to be close and drawn to me because he kept going back to God. And in his presence, there was fullness of joy. In the reproaches, in the necessities, in the persecution, in the distress. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So I don't know for any other person if I'm going through anything uh, that is unusual. Don't sorry for me. Just pray for me. Because I decide to maintain that relationship with God in spite of this evening, Church of God. Don't allow your thoughts. For a moment to believe that the Almighty God has lost the ability to heal. The devil is a liar. Oh, hallelujah. And that his love for his people has diminished. Hebrews 13, 8 declares Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He declares in Isaiah 55, 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. God's plan for Israel is still God's plan for the church today. We have them as an example and as a model for I know the plan, the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. 
you might be mocked, you might be scorned, you might be rejected, they might call you big foot or big hand or whatever. Hallelujah. And when you come even in the house of the Lord, people scorn you. Yes, you just scorn the woman with the issue of blood. But one day, hallelujah, when they expected that the woman's condition would be over, I want you to know, hallelujah, many of them thought it would be her burial. They were uh, upset when they saw her. Oh, hallelujah. But sometimes when God wants us to get closest to him, he allows us to crawl instead of walk to him. Oh, glory to the Almighty. Somebody might be knocked down and you're on your face this evening crawling. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, if you, hallelujah, can just lift your faith. Yes, it might be ears, 12 years. Oh, the woman with the issue of blood suffered and just when she thought it was over. Hallelujah. Her faith pushed her. Hallelujah. To touch just the parcel of the garment of the master. If I could but touch the hem of his garment, if I could but touch some part of his clothes, I know I'd be healed. I know my sins would be forgiven. If I could but touch him, I know, hallelujah, I'd be healed. Oh, the apostle Paul recognizing the unlimited power of God was not afraid to face affliction or death because he knew that God would glory in, hallelujah, in his resurrection even if he died. Paul declared in Philippians 1 21 for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Ah, uh, some people are afraid to die. Hallelujah. But it's appointed whether you're a Christian, you could be a Christian somewhere, you could speak in tongues somewhere, you could uh, do some uh, every unusual thing, you could give your, your, all of your paycheck to the church. One day you are going to die. And it is important that we give more attention to our spiritual life more than our physical life. Oh my God, it's important to see the medical doctor when you are sick. It's important to call for the elders of the church, let them pray. But it's also important to call upon God to let for spiritual stability because there are a lot of physically healthy people, but they are spiritually sick. They cause trouble, confusion. Oh, hallelujah. In the body of Christ, they malice, they gossip. And that is sickness. You are sick. Twice dead, knocked up by the root. How long shall you last? Hallelujah. Divine healing may come through traditional medicine or through direct uh, intervention by God in response to prayer. Or if God wills, wholeness may not come until the ultimate healing in heaven. So what if we will not be healed until we get over yonder? Oh, are you going to say God is partial? Oh, God heal pastor. Oh, God heal sister Jane. Our brother Tom. And, and they don't heal me. I'm not going back down to that place called church. Stay where you are. Hallelujah. Where the tree fall, there shall it land. James 5, 16 declare. Confess your fault one to another. Pray for one another that he may be healed. The effectual fervent cry of the righteous availeth much. God is the great physician. And all healing, physical, emotional, spiritual, belongs to him. What does the Bible say about healing? Isaiah 55, which is then quoted in 1 Peter 2, 24, is a key verse on healing. But often it is misunderstood and misplaced or misapplied. Isaiah 55, 3. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. The word translated here, healed, can mean either spiritual 
or physical healing. However, in the context of Isaiah 53 and 1 Peter 2, it makes it clear that it was speaking of spiritual healing. Spiritual healing of the soul. We leave out the, that part of it. A healthy, oh, hallelujah, spiritual life can produce a healthy physical life. Oh, glory to God. Jesus himself, I don't want you to, for, to, to uh, believe that I'm saying that you have to be spiritually, I say can produce. Because sometimes the heart is physically against your brothers and your sisters. That's why it, it, um, it is spiritually against your brothers and sisters or against your family members. So it automatically later become bad because it is puffed up. It, 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 you, you get so upset that the heart um, overworks and then the heart becomes physically bad. However, in the context of Isaiah 53 and 1 Peter 2, it makes it clear that it was speaking of spiritual healing. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might be dead to sin and be alive to righteousness. First Peter 2, 24. Who is own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. This verse is talking about sin and righteousness not sickness and disease i want you to read it for yourself and you will realize it's not talking about sin and right um, sickness and disease it's talking about sin and righteousness and just as how we want to be healed just as our people put themselves in line some stay some will travel from here to africa some will travel from here to alaska uh, to find themselves in a line for somebody to touch them to be healed. I want you to know if you believe God, wherever you are, hallelujah, you can be healed because he's touched with the feelings of our infirmity. So I want you to make sure, hallelujah, if mankind would line up for their soul salvation, just like how they line up to be physically healed, or to find out what their next door neighbor has done to them, or their children. They would be in a better standing to plead the blood of Jesus against the forces of darkness. So we can have faith in the Almighty God that we can be healed. The Bible does not specifically link physical healing with spiritual healing. Sometimes people are physically healed when they place their faith in Christ. But this is not always the case. Let nobody fool you. Let nobody put you under their feet. Let no person who call themselves a Christian uh, ask anything up to you. The only thing that I can tell you, generational curse. is that every day thing. This is happening to you. They're telling you things that are just happening every day. That's why you must know God for yourself. Because when they are telling you, it must line up with God's word. And when they are telling you your spirit must be a witness, you're not supposed to come back home. And you are worried and threatened. You're supposed to come back home relieved. Some people are physically healed when they place their faith in Jesus. But it's not always the case. Sometimes it's not God's will to heal you. But sometimes, or sometimes it's God, not God's will to heal you at that specific moment. The Apostle Paul, or the Apostle John rather, gives us a proper perspective in John, in 1 John 5, 14 to 15. And this is the confidence we have in him. Hallelujah. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, you have to be positive. You have to be conscious that God hears you. Hallelujah. You have to have a relationship with him for him to hear you. Oh, hallelujah. I don't want any mouthpiece for me. 
Hallelujah. I want to have a relationship with God. That when I swear, when, hallelujah, when he speaks to me, it relieves my troubled mind. The psalm matter, it's the only voice I hear that makes a difference. And I follow one day at a time. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to what? His will. Never forget his will. Seeking a partner, never forget his will. <laughs> Uh, going into college, never forget his will. Going into university, never forget his will. Seeking a job, never forget his will. Going into the immigration, never forget his will. Oh, and if he, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have, hallelujah, the petition that we desire of him. Jesus before his suffering. But before he was crucified, before he died, before his death on the cross, he cried out in Luke 22, 42, when he felt the pressure of sin upon him, when he felt uh, his father, hallelujah, could not look at sin. So in his humanness, God could not look down on him. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why hast thou been so far from helping me? Father, he came to himself and said, Father, if it be in thy will, let this cup pass from me. But he was conscious, though he was man, he was divine. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Therefore, brothers and sisters, God is important. In our lives, God has, we have to have a relationship with God for the miraculous to take place. I want you to know, don't be fooled. God still heals people. I said, God still heals. But sickness, disease, pain, and death are still a reality in this world. Not everybody is going to be healed. Some are going to die <laughs> unless the Lord returns. Every person that is here <clears throat> now in this house and you are in the reach of my voice, <laughs> except the Lord returns soon, we all are going to die. And if our soul is not well with God, then we are going to experience a lost eternity. Unless the Lord returns, everyone who is alive today will die. And that includes Christians. We are going to die. It's appointed for us to die. And after death comes the judgment. If God tarries long, we all will die as a result of natural death. As a result of physical problems disease, sickness, and injury. So while we desire physical healing to make us well and move around, let us be sure. Let us make sure, the songwriter said, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That's why everybody loves to repeat it. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our feet. But upon him with his stripes, we are healed. Yes, we are healed uh, by the power of God. But is your soul healed? Is your mind healed? Is our mind the mind of Christ? Are we in the will of God? If God carries long, we all are going to die as a result of natural death, physical problems, disease, sickness, injury. So while we desire physical healing, make sure we experience a soul healing for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who so ever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. It's not always God's will to heal us physically but it's always his will that we are spiritually healthy 
Or is he contradicting himself? <laughs> I, rather, I don't know about you, but I rather above everything that my soul is prospering in God. It's not always God's will to heal a person physically. A person may sincerely pray. And this is where the problem comes in. For most church folks, for Christians, they sincerely pray. Sometimes they could do maybe even better staying away in, 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 the, in the physical because when they move from place to place, they, they are feeling pain. Some of them come into the house of the Lord and while they sit there and comfortable, they are in pain. And all they can hear, you must have done some wickedness in your lifetime while you are suffering like that. But I want you to know, a person may sincerely pray and truly have faith in God that he can heal, but didn't receive healing. If it is not God's will to provide healing at that time, then no healing will come. But like he spoke to the Apostle Paul, speaking profoundly, he's speaking to us this evening. From 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. And he said unto me. My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore. I rather glory in my infirmities. That the power hallelujah. Of Christ may rest upon me. Sometimes God's blessing come. Other ways besides physical. You don't understand that. Sometimes the blessing of the Lord comes other ways than physical healing. Sometimes God permitted to be in our lives to distract the enemy. Because the enemy's desire is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I'm not saying you should be comfortable in your illness or your sickness. But don't let it stop you from praising God. Don't let it stop you from having that closer walk with God. Sometimes God's blessing comes other ways besides physical healing. If there, if it rather were always God's will for people to be healed, then everyone would be healed and nobody would die. <laughs> nobody would become healed and nobody would die. If it's good health, we always have that we should praise God always. Then, hallelujah, God is not marked. If we have to be healthy to praise God, if we have everything has to be all right, if we have to be physically, financially uh, healthy to praise God, then God just wins at our ignorance. God's will, hallelujah, is not our will. Our ways are not his ways. His ways are perfect. His will will not change to suit our situation. If good health were always God's will, then Christians would never die. <laughs> he cannot always blame someone's sickness and the lack of faith or sin. For we know biblically that God sometimes uses illness to accomplish his will. The Apostle Paul himself had a physical amen that the Lord declined. Have you ever put your card in the machine and it declined? No transaction can be done. God declined to heal Paul. But remember, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in me. As for such for the dear for I will rather glorify in my infirmities that the power, hallelujah, of God, hallelujah, may be manifested in my life. But brothers and sisters, it's important. For the miraculous take place. We say God still heal. Hallelujah. God still deliver. But I want us to know. That it does not always happen in our timing. It happens in God's timing. Hallelujah. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Unfortunately. Uh, I would say. Uh, ulti uh, ultimately. Our full 
physical healing will never be until we find ourselves in that place of bliss. Our ultimate healing, our full physical healing awaits us in heaven. In heaven, there will be no more pain, sickness, disease, suffering, or death. Revelation 21 speaks of this. Hallelujah. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming from God out of heaven appeared as a bride adorned to meet her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away. I wonder who is crying tonight. I wonder who is anguishing tonight. I cannot take any more. Uh, I cannot bear these burdens alone. And you tell Jesus, and it seems as if nothing is happening, but I need you need to give him some a chance for something to happen. Dry up your tears and look to him. Oh, because soon and very soon we are going to see the king, and God shall wipe away our tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Church, we need to be less preoccupied with our physical condition. Oh, hallelujah. And the devil will allow you just as you walk into the house of the Lord to become sick, to distract you, to let you feel like that there is no power in God. But we need. To rest our hand on that part of the body and speak to the condition and bind it up in the name of Jesus. Our God has given you power to do so. We need to be less preoccupied with our physical condition in this world. And a lot more concerned with our spiritual condition. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy unto God. Oh, hallelujah, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There we, and there and then, we'll be able to focus. Somebody say focus. Focus our hearts and God and not on our situation are our problems are on our sickness. A lot of people die early because not because of the sickness, but because of the worrying about the sickness. Some people hear that they have certain condition, terminal conditions, and before they knew they were head over heels. But immediately, as they know, because they, according to medical science, it's life threatening. Then they start to worry. But then, if we focus our hearts on heaven, oh, we will no longer have to deal with these physical problems. According to Revelation, God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying for the old and former things are passed away. This evening, as I close, I want you to know that we have a responsibility. God would allow me to point out Isaiah, uh, hallelujah, 53, to let us know that even though we can align it to spirit, to physical healing, but it was speaking specifically of a soul healing. So, Second Chronicles 7 14 is speaking to our soul healing. If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves. Oh my God, humility seems to be a thing of the past in the body of Christ these days. Everybody is on a height. 
Oh my God. But we need to humble ourselves. Don't let God humble you. Never you pray for God to humble you. He will not walk with the proud nor the scornful humble ourselves. We need to humble ourselves to walk with God. If my people that are called by my name should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Our God is a divine healer. He is a comprehensive healer. We cannot dictate to him to say the, body, the head needs healing before the soul because his will must be done. He is a healer of the body, the soul, and the spirit. I want us this evening to cry out like David. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Can we think about the benefits of the Lord? Let, let us remember. When we remember the benefits of the Lord, we will remember Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible for us to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Because what happened? He is a reward of them that diligently seek him. We cannot seek God for healing to go back and serve the devil. We have to seek him and remember that even though we need healing for the physical, he is requiring a healing for the spiritual. May God this evening touch somebody's heart, somebody who has given up on church, somebody who has given up on church people, Somebody who has given up on your relatives and even given up on yourself. I want you to know that even though you have gone so far, that God has not given up on you. He's calling you this evening from a life of wasted years. We know you might be feeling emotionally disturbed, depressed, cast down. And the different agency, the psychiatrist, the psychologist, is saying all kind of stuff to you based on what you tell them. Because I want you to know that without you tell them something, they will not be able to treat you. I want you to talk to the general this evening. The Lord God who is strong and mighty in battle. He knows all things. He knows when you are talking to him, if you are speaking the truth. So this evening, I want you to know he is a God that can look right through you without putting anything on you. He don't have to put you to an x-ray machine. He doesn't have to do any test on you to know what is happening. He just wants you to tell him and he will come up with the right diagnosis. If he does not heal you instantaneously, he is a God that is an anti God. Can we bow our heads this evening? Remembering that divine healing is provided in the atonement. But if God doesn't heal you today, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. If you'll never be healing your lifetime, still trust him because as long as he is keeping you alive, that is what comes. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening. We thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, your profound words. Oh God, that you are a divine healer. Oh God, if any among you are sick, we should call. Lord, it is important for us to call. You have given us a mouth to call. You have given us the will to call. Oh God, and sometimes we abuse the will that you have given us to do our own thing. Oh God, but you are a God that does not go against man's will. Lord God. Man commit murder, man commit suicide, man do all kind of manner of evil. Man, oh God, go to the witches and the warlocks to stop people. Oh God, but you have a set time to deal with it. There are many things even in the body of Christ. You tell me personally, Lord, that if you put up with it, I should leave it alone. Just declare your word. Don't get caught up with the going and comings of this life. 
preach the word. The instant, in season and out of season, reprove and reprove you with all long suffering. This evening we come to you because, Lord, we realize that when this body is not well, oh God, it disturbs our going and our coming. So it is when, oh God, the spiritual is not right, oh God, it disturbs you because you have done everything for us to be spiritually healthy. You have given your only begotten son that whosoever believeth in you should not perish but have everlasting life in that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. Therefore, this evening, we commend ourselves in your hand. In your hand, we commit our present, our future. Lord God, we may not, oh, hallelujah, hear your purpose, see for all is well that done by thee. Therefore, this evening, we pray for those in the house that are not well. Oh God, we are still calling upon you and we say, heal them according to your divine will. The doctors are limited, but you are unlimited. Online need healing. Oh God, healing of the mind, the body, and the soul. Lord God, as they stretch their faith to you, the devil is trying to let some of them believe that they will not be healed too. But Lord God, I wish they could declare, oh, like the woman with the issue of blood, if I could but touch the hem of his garment. She did not just say, if I could not, but she crossed her way through and touched you. And because of that, the miraculous take place. And personally for faith, out of the low bar condition, and lift it up, oh God, and place it at the king's table this evening. Help us to have a mind, oh God, to be delivered. Because, Lord God, when we have that mind, oh, it means that we are carrying your mind. Your will is that we be good health and be prosperous. Lord, if you choose for us to be in any affliction, you say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you will deliver us out of them all. You never say when. You never tell us directly when or whatever method you choose for our deliverance, we shall glorify you, Lord God, because even in our affliction, while the enemy is mocking and jeering and saying we are done with, right in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah! You rescue us. We ask this evening that you will rescue the perishing on this airwave. Care for the dying somebody on the hospital bed. If it's not your will, oh God, the doctor has tipped over. Family members start crying and mourning. Oh God, somebody that is diagnosed with cancer, somebody who is diagnosed with lupus and all kind of condition. The heart is not well. The kidneys are not functioning. Oh God, and they have given up on themselves. But I believe that there are some persons who you have not given over. To the oh God, to the final oh God declaration of the medical oh doctor, you have not given them over to the final declaration of the specialist because you are oh hallelujah, not the ultimate but the final specialist. You have the final say, therefore, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, healer, deliverer. Sustainer, we commit ourselves into your hand. This evening, we take evasive action against the enemy of our soul, Satan. And we say the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Healing Jesus, prove the devil wrong this evening. Oh God, because the hell is confused right now. Because we mentioned about the physical healing and the soul healing. Lord God, hell is bad. And does not want any of them to come true. But I approve you that in one night, in one day, in minutes, in seconds, both the physical and the spiritual healing can take place because you are the Almighty God. We commend ourselves to you. Heal that man's relationship. Heal that woman's relationship. Heal that child with that infirmity. We curse it 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We come against every Down syndrome condition this evening. Mighty healer, wonderful counselor, we call upon you and we pray you stretch out your hands and we curse that condition. We declare it depart now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, this child shall not grow any longer with it. This child has great potential. This child shall not fail in the grades. Oh, God, I don't know who I'm talking to you, but your spirit is leading. We declare that child well this evening by the mighty hand of God. We come against every dizziness in the head. We come against, oh, God, every pain in the body of your people. We shut down the networking of the evil one. There are those who are under attack. Oh God, we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Touch your people everywhere. Touch those of us in the house. Cover me one more time under your blood. We pray for our families. Oh God, my wife's family and my family. Oh God, we come in children, we come in siblings. Oh God, we come in our nieces and we come in nephews under your hand, Lord. Those who are not saved, we declare salvation. Those who are sick and afflicted, oh God, remember, oh God, one of your child's servants in England, oh God, oh Brother Bowman by name, who is afflicted by the adversary. Rema Sholia Kandosh Yamasai. Hey, Satan, we bind you, take your filthy hands off this man, this man who you are blessed with the wisdom, your wisdom, God. We ask God that you will touch for the woman right now, wherever he is lying. We pray, Almighty God, that you will oh, move upon him like a rushing mighty wind. You are a divine healer, you are a problem solver. I pray that whatever the enemy has caused to happen, oh God, you have crossed the wire. We declare every cross wire will oh that is chafed in his life right now by the adversary, or oh, will now be coated by the blood of Jesus. We declare him healed and we declare him delivered. And we cover ourselves under your blood this evening. And we thank you for being with us and reminding us that you want us to be physically healed and you want us to be spiritually healed. It may not happen in our time. Oh God, but you have the final say. Lord, we ask this evening that you will remember Sister Anifa. Oh God. Oh Lord God, praying for uncommon favor to be strong in the Lord and also for her children. We ask God that you will touch her. Help her to know that you have not forgotten her. You still remember her. Help her to know that they remain at a rest for the children of God. Help her to know that persecution, oh God, means, oh God, that we should persevere. Help her to know that she's struck down, but she's not knocked out. Lord God, we are afflicted on every side. But Lord God, help her to know that you are still the God that is interested in her welfare, interested in the welfare of her family. Lord Almighty God, we commit the soul that is perplexed and cast down feel beaten up by the adversary. Oh God, we declare a shift in now in the name of oh God. Can I ask you for a now invasion upon our situation? And we declare and declare that the gates of hell will no longer prevail against her. Lord, we ask you not for the ordinary for her, but for the extraordinary. We declare divine favor shall be upon her. And when she shall, oh hallelujah, come true. That the years that the locusts have heat, the palmer and the conqueror shall be restored. Yes, Lord God, you say the enemy shall see, for you shall prepare a table before her in the very presence of her enemies. I commend her to you, Lord, and I commend her spirit in your hand. And we pray you touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. This evening we leave her in your divine care and we say thanks in care of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Thank you for listening in.
and thank you for being with us on this airwave. Somebody has still need for Ask Edova and family. Raquel Green for my friend. And Marsha Maria Green. Father, we commit them into your hand right now. We pray you stay your hand upon their lives. Whatever unusual thing is happening in Master Dover's uh, life and her family, oh God, you have given us power to shut it down and to trample upon it. We command it, oh God. So, oh God, we, we, we pull all its part, oh uh, God, apart that they will not be able to function anymore in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we present this family in your hand. Whatever they are going through, help them to know that you have not forgotten them. For your will is still for them to be a success. We pray for Raquel Green. Oh, for her friend, Maria Green. Oh, God, whatever is happening in this life, we pray that you will intervene right now by the power that worketh in you. Lord, you have never lost a battle. You have never lost a battle. Oh, God, you are our battle axe. Lord God, therefore, as we call upon you this evening, we ask that you will deliver. Let your will be done. Your will is to let these people know that there is a God who is an anti God who cannot fail, will never fail. We smash the monetary gadgets of the adversary tonight and we declare that every mirror that is mirroring their lives that is ungodly will not be able to mirror them no more. But you, O oh God, shall direct their path. Help them to know in all their ways they should acknowledge. And you will direct your path. We give everything to you, Lord. And we thank you again for this evening. We trust that as your word goes forth, it will not go on stony ground, but it will reach on some hearts and it will accomplish much. Now may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, the faithful fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore, we say. Amen. God bless you for coming and Thanks to those of you on the social media, the Facebook, and YouTube. May God bless you. May heaven face shine upon you and give you peace. Thank you very much. Thank you.